It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Life is short. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Book the trip, have the adventure, take the risk, eat the dessert. Okay, so we'll cross off the eat the dessert bit, but the rest of it, do what makes you happy. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Well, the weeks are just flying by. (laughs) It's like six weeks, five weeks away from Christmas. Have you done the count? Do you know how many weeks it actually is? I don't really want to know. (laughs) Yeah, let me tell you. So, So next Friday, it's the 25th. That's one week. Then the following week, it's the second. That's two weeks. Then the 9th and the 16th, that's four weeks. In five weeks' time, it's the 23rd of December, two days before Christmas. Five weeks. Five weeks until Christmas. Uh, today's I'll do better tomorrow, Kylie. Are you ready for Christmas? Oh, yes, I'm so ready. I know exactly what we're going to buy the kids this year. I've been thinking about it. I've been talking with you about it. Can you believe it? This might be the most involved I've been in Christmas for years, primarily because I'm trying to stop us spending money. Yeah, <laughs> the same. I'm watching what's happening with the cost of fuel and food. Went to, went to the supermarket the other day and I just about collapsed with, number one, the, the, the poor quality of the fruit and veggies that were on offer, but number two, the prices. I was just thinking, this this is not normal. Like, this is crazy. And all of the forecasts uh, look out. It's, um, it's, it's, it's looking kind of nerve-wracking for the rest of this year and next year. Yikes. So that's why I've been involved with Christmas. How do we make sure that we – I mean, we've been talking literally about doing a no-gifts Christmas, but we can't quite agree on – how many gifts no gifts actually means because I keep on saying, oh, but we've got to buy at least something for this person or this kid really needs it. So we, then we were talking about doing an essentials Christmas, just the socks and undies kind of thing. A bike is not essential. We socks and undies. You can't put that in with socks and undies. Our kids listen to this podcast, so don't say anything to reveal it. You can say who's getting it. <laughs> I can't believe that you just admitted that. Oh, boy. Okay. So, uh, Kylie, the I'll Do Better Tomorrow podcast is what we do every Friday. Today, it's the day where we reflect on the week that was, how things went, what we could have done better, what we're struggling with with our parenting, or maybe what we've done well with an intention to do better tomorrow based on our learning from our parenting this week. So, do you want to go first today, ladies before gentlemen, or do you want me to dive into it and share my one? You're so kind letting me go first. I do what I can. (laughs) So, I was just thinking, on Monday, we talked about this idea of burnout, Mm -hmm. and we talked about the things that we have control of versus those things that we don't. Yes. And um, over the weekend, we had an opportunity to go away, but when I looked at the calendar – There was activities on Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday evening, and it really didn't make sense. Like it was like, how can we do this? We've got kids going to work. We've got activities to be at. We've got responsibilities. And then I kind of just looked at it and I went, you know what? We actually need this. We actually need to stop. And I have complete control over what I put in my basket. Yep. I actually get to say, yes, we can do this or no. And sometimes I think – We get caught up in just the running of life and we say yes, 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 without taking much stock of what it's actually doing to us. And so we just kind of threw caution to the wind. We picked the kids up at 12 o'clock on Friday afternoon, jumped in the car, raced down the highway and spent a weekend not completely in bed, but we pretty much stopped, (laughs) didn't we? I I slept more while we were away than I can remember sleeping for like two decades during the daytime. I, in fact, I, I, I don't want to be boring here, but normally I'm sort of like a seven to eight hours a night and then just living life a hundred kilometres an hour. Um, whatever night it was, I got about 10 hours sleep and then that afternoon I fell asleep again at about 4.30 and you woke me up at 6.30 and I was in la-la land. Like, you, I had no- and then you literally went to sleep again at, at, at like nine o'clock. <laughs> I was gone <laughs> without any hassles at all. But but that just highlights to me how full on life is, and how much we are sleep deprived, and how much we're not looking after ourselves. And as we move into the silly season, it's so important that we're actually getting the rest that we need, and that we're on our game. Well, literally, we we have never done anything like this before. No, not really ever. And, and so the reason I kind of wanted to share it was just that acknowledgement as we go back to Monday's episode and the conversation around what things do I have control of? What can I, what am I welcoming into my life and what can I actually get rid of? Yeah. 
last weekend was just a chance to just get rid of all of the excess and just stop. I know you've mentioned this already, but I can't stress, it was not convenient for us to do it. It really wasn't. We, we had to cancel so many things. We put a couple of people out because we had already committed to some things that, that mattered to us and to them. But you were hesitating. You were on the fence and I was the one that actually made the call. I said, let's just, we're, we're going to pull the pin and go. And oh my, it, it was so great. I, I feel like we should do it every weekend. <laughs> It was so good. Oh, wow. I did say to you when we drove in the driveway and I realised that we were going to be hitting the ground running, this is why we needed to go away. Yeah. Because Cause how full on has this week been? <laughs> it's, it's been crazy. Yeah. What's your take-home message in relation to, to doing that? I think it's just about being intentional about yeah. what we say yes to. And especially as we go into December, life gets so hectic and we take on more and more because there's, there's a bit of, FOMO going on. We don't want to miss out on all of the celebrations and the excitement, but we also get to a point where we just, we actually end up missing out because we're not able to be fully present Mm, in mm. any one of the things that we're doing because we've just jam packed our schedule so much. It's not always going to be convenient. You're going to feel like you're letting people down, but when your family needs to stop, your family needs to stop. So funny that you say that. I've just jumped onto Facebook right before we began recording this podcast and one of my friends, uh, Amanda Stevens, she's a, a globally recognised keynote speaker, very, very much in demand, and she's written with a picture of herself hanging out on Green Island, life is short, tomorrow isn't guaranteed, book the trip, have the adventure, take the risk, eat the dessert. Okay, so we'll cross off the eat the dessert bit, but the rest of it, uh, do what makes you happy. Just just go and do it. And sometimes you've just got to pack up and get away for the weekend, even if it does mean that you're going to be staying in the in-laws rumpus room because they live closer to the beach or they live closer to the mountains or closer to that thing that lights you up. Great, great take-home message. And I'm so glad that you shared that. What's your idea better tomorrow? So I'm going to combine two really quickly because they both centre around challenging behaviour from kids. The first one is just a quick story about our school refuser, our eight-year-old, Miss Emily, who, I mean, gosh, she just hates going to school. And when I've talked to her about it, as I did on this particular morning where she lost the plot, didn't want to go to school, it was back on Tuesday. Uh, we're sitting in the car, I'm driving her to school, and I said, so, Em, what's, what's going on? Like, what's the deal? Why do you – I mean, once you're at school, you're fine. You don't whinge when you're in the car. It's just getting ready for school. What is it about getting ready for school that you hate? And she said, Dad, I hate school. And I said, why? This answer, I keep on hearing it. It's boring. So what is it about – It's a waste of time. Yeah, what is it about school that's boring? School. <laughs> Like, it's all boring. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, she, she but was – But once she gets there, like I said, I've seen her no, in No, she was fine. She's, she's, she enjoys melts it. Melts into it, gets on with it, just cannot get her out the door. It's so darn hard. And so during that morning, on Tuesday morning, I was a little bit firm with her and said, you need to get ready. And I can't remember what she was doing, but I, I took it out of her hands. I think she was uh, – was she on a screen? No, she wouldn't have been on a screen. We wouldn't have let her – maybe she was painting – and I took the paintbrush off her and said, you can paint again once you're ready for school, but you've got to get ready for school. And she lost it. I hate you. You're the worst. I mean, really volatile, really hostile sort of stuff. Ran into the room. And after about 10 seconds, I just I took a couple of breaths and thought, my job is to not add to her suffering right now, but I need to draw a line in the sand and she's got to get ready for school. And I went in there and I picked her up and held her at eye level and she was screaming at me. And I just said, I know you're mad, but we've got to get ready for school. And I know you hate me but I still love you, but we've got to get ready for school. And I put her on the ground and um, I I was just so, I I so badly didn't want to do and say what I did. I wanted to be really mad at her, but I feel like the more we do this podcast, the more we do these I'll do better tomorrow conversations and the more books I write, the better I get at holding it together and not, uh, because that's really what it's all about, right? Don't escalate so much that you end up out of control. Don't join them in their chaos. Uh, And that ties in with, with the other story from, uh, while we were away on the weekend, there was a Mars bar in the fridge or a Milky Way or whatever it was, and it went missing. There were only you, me, and our two youngest kids there. And one of the kids was, well, they, they were both saying they didn't need it. You and I didn't need it. Uh, and we knew that obviously the, the, the Mars bar fairy hadn't snuck into the refrigerator and, eaten and then thrown the rubbish in the bin. And it took about half an hour to get there. And when our daughter, who was responsible, finally confessed to it, I so badly wanted to be mad at her. I so badly wanted to just lose it with her. And in, instead, there was just that, I, I need to regulate. I need to be the adult here. I need to not join her in the chaos that's going on inside her. And I've got to recognize that if she's lying, 
there's something underpinning that that we've got to get to. And in the end, uh, as we as we sat together, and I, I told her that I absolutely loved her no matter what. She could say whatever she wanted, and I would absolutely love her no matter what. Those three words, no matter what, the unconditionality that's there. But I just said, if, if, if we don't have honesty in our relationship, then we don't have a relationship. We've got to be honest with each other. And Kylie... I mean, you were there. You saw what happened. About two minutes later, she burst into tears. We gave her a big hug. And then she said, I need to tell you a few things. And then she just started telling us all the things that she's been carrying, the burdens, the weight, the challenge, the difficulties. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, how important is it? How important is it that we don't add to their burdens, that we don't add to their suffering, that we don't call them names, that we don't belittle them, that we don't diminish their experience, but that we just let them know that trust is essential and that we love them no matter what. They can say anything and we will still love them. And once she'd finished and she had a big cry about it all, there was just a lightness in her. For the next several days, there was just this beautiful lightness in that she knew that she'd let us know what was going on in her life and we understood and we were there to work with her and help her and make things as uh, be, be as supportive as we could be. I, I think it was just profound. I know that's a long monologue, but the take-home message really is unconditionality. Love you no matter what. That's, to me, at the heart of what is the very best parenting. When you talk to your children, when they finally come clean after being dishonest, nine times out of ten, their reason for their dishonesty was because they didn't want to get in trouble. They didn't want to feel like they were being judged. They didn't want to feel like they were unloved. They were unlovable. Mm. And when we're able to give them that security of knowing that no matter what they say, no matter what they do, that we'll always love them, there's this ability for them to just open up. I couldn't believe that she was so candid with us after that experience. Yeah. Because up until that point, she she didn't want to tell us the truth because she knew she was going to get in trouble. Yeah. And then she just told us everything. And then once she realised that she wasn't actually going to get in trouble, that she was free yeah. to, to share what was on her heart – it just it the floodgates opened mm. and she was able to just be completely transparent so that's our I'll do better tomorrow for today uh, number 1 take the holiday book the trip have the adventure eat the dessert get away for the weekend do whatever you can to to or, be or in just the, bunk in at home yeah, yeah but, shut but, the gate yeah, that's right turn off the phone <laughs> don't let anybody know you didn't go away and just stay at home it it really isn't about what you do for for me because you work from home the idea of staying at home and not doing anything is actually not really possible. If we're here, you're working, you're doing something. Even if it's not full time, mm. you've got that constant draw card to kind of, you know, pick up the laptop or whatever. So for us, it was so important for us to just get out of the environment. But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be an expense. It's just about stopping. Yeah. And the second take home message, unconditionality. Love you no matter what. Make sure the kids hear it and understand it regularly, both in good times and bad times, so that you can get through all the times. Uh, Have a great weekend. Hope that you get some quality time with the family. Hope you get some downtime and hope that you get to make some plans to make the upcoming Christmas season spectacular. The Happy Families Podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media with Craig Bruce as our executive producer. If you'd like more information about making your family happier, please visit us at happyfamilies.com.au. And if you have not signed up for our newsletter, you want to do it in a real hurry because next week we launch our Black Friday sales. And the Facebook algorithm doesn't always work in your favour. So make sure you are a subscriber to the Happy Families newsletter. We're going to let you know all about the huge Black Friday sales uh, via happyfamilies.com.au. Hold up. 